The title of this wow this week is called Making PowerPoint Powerful. Um, I started thinking about it because I saw an article uh, that just got published. Apparently there is a Swiss political group that is attempting to make PowerPoint illegal. They say that it actually decreases productivity and motivation. Um, so I've included a link to that. You can read that article and let me know what you think. Um, but because I don't think PowerPoint's going away anytime soon, here are a few ways, since you probably still have to use it, to make it effective. All right. The first thing I want to think about is setting up the room. The main thing I want you to know is I want you to, as you're facing your audience, you need to be to the right of any screen so that people can look at you and then look to your left and look at the screen. This is because we read from left to right. You are the presentation. So I want your audience to look at you and then look at your slide. That's in their automatic biofeedback loop, okay? The next thing to think about is that a lot of people, when they start to do PowerPoint, turn down the lights and, oh, by the way, they're in the dark as well. So if that is the way the room is set up, you need to bring a portable spotlight. You can get one of those from Radio Shack, okay? Because you need, again, to keep the audience's focus. You are the presentation, not your visuals. And finally, during Q&A, I really need you to have somebody turn the lights back up because very often people finish their presentation and it was great. Um, and then they do their whole Q&A in the dark because they've forgotten that, that small detail. So those are things to think about with your room. In terms of setting up your slides, I want you to remember the 10, 20, 30 rule. This comes from Guy Kawasaki over at Mac. His idea is every presentation should only have 10 slides. It should only go on for 20 minutes. And if you're writing in smaller than 30 point type, you have too many words on the page. Okay. Uh, I want you to think about the reverse six, um, which is that you want to put the most important uh, piece of information in the middle of your slide and then build outward and around from that. Okay. It's the same way that magazine covers. They have all and newspapers. All of the important information is in the top right and then it circles around to the middle. Does this make sense? Think of a reverse six. And finally, um, with regard to setting up your slides, uh, we trust what's on the right-hand side of a screen and we don't trust what's on the left. And this is the reason why all the talk show hosts sit on the right, okay? Letterman's on the right, Leno's on the right, Oprah used to be on the right. Um, so if you're doing a compare contrast, whatever you want, the idea you want your audience to adopt needs to be on the right-hand side of the slide. Okay, this is the reason why in television commercials, the bright white sock, is always on the right hand side of your screen. So those are some ways to make your slides powerful. And finally, and probably the thing you don't want to hear, PowerPoint presentations are about you practicing out loud. What happens is a lot of us get so caught up in building our visuals that we just get deck fatigue. And we think, well, my visuals are great and we don't work on ourselves, but you are the presentation. So I need you to practice it out loud. Some of you, this is terrible. It's like, you know, you, you don't enjoy make-believe. There's no audience there. I dig that. As a kid, I was very grounded in reality, as they say. I didn't like playing in-house. But you need to practice out loud at least once. And then after you finish doing it once, I need you to do it again. Okay? And then maybe one more time after that. Um, so I hope these are helpful. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Have fun and make your PowerPoint powerful.